This video is sponsored by Best Buy. Today we're going to look at the DJI Mini 2. This is the fourth drone I've had from them and the smallest of the bunch. I started with the Phantom 4, kind of big, then I went down to the Spark, which was great to fly. Then I had the Mavic Zoom 2 and now this tiny little one, this might be the one I end up flying the most. When it comes to drones, there's really no such thing as the best drone. Like there's bigger drones, like the Inspire series that'll have the highest image quality, but there's a ton of constraints, requirements, and regulations about where you can fly that kind of thing. This, not so much. And that's a lot of the reason that this is my new favorite. Okay, so today I become a YouTuber cliche, but in the best possible way, I've got my drone. I've got a one wheel. I'm very excited about this. So first off, I don't know how to ride a one wheel. I do know how to fly a drone. And I know these two things have been combined many times, but it's still, it's exciting for me. Like I haven't done them together before. What I want to try to do is see if the drone can just track me across the bridge as I ride by on the one wheel. So this is, docu this is documenting me learning how to ride this. Thing. So let's go through all the reasons why, starting with the fact that it is 249 grams. Obviously part of the reason that's exciting is because, you know, it's very light to put in your bag, it's very small and compact. It's funny because actually now the controller is the heavy part. This weighs quite a bit more than the actual drone itself, but it's very compact and has no extra bits sticking out of it. In fact, if you look at the bottom here, this is where the little joysticks are hiding that just screw into the top. So now you're not only more likely to throw it in your bag more often, but you're actually allowed to fly it in more places. This is the really important part here. Let me read you the regulations from Transport Canada, which that's where I'm from, but this is what they say about it. Pilots of micro drones, which the DJI Mini 2 is, don't need to register their drone or get a drone pilot certificate to fly them. Pilots of micro drones are not bound by the same requirements as other drones. However, you must not operate your drone in a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of anyone. And if you've flown any bigger drones, you'll realize that sounds very different from the other regulations, which are very strict these days and you have to be very careful about them. You still have to be aware of the regulations wherever it is you're flying them. I'll provide a link in the description below, but there's a lot more flexibility than ever before, which comes as a huge relief. You know that expression, the best camera is the one you have with you. Sometimes I feel like that's an excuse for when people don't want to carry a heavier camera. In the case of the DJI Mini 2, I feel like that really is true because there are so many times when you just don't bring a drone with you either because it's over the weight limit of where you would want to fly it or you don't have space in your backpack. There's a million reasons not to bring a drone. So even more so than with traditional cameras, I find a tiny drone can make a huge impact on how often you end up using it. And then the best part, I can fit both of them in my pockets. <laughs> Very underrated feature. The next big feature worth calling attention to is this now has OcuSync 2. What, what the heck is OcuSync 2? It's the way that the drone and the controller talk to each other. I don't exactly understand the details of it, but I know it works a lot better than Wi-Fi, which is what the Spark used to use. That was my previous small drone, but my big complaint was that it was hard to fly it compared to the bigger ones. The DJI Mini 2 now has up to 10 kilometers range, which is more than I ever planned to fly it, because you should try to keep it within line of sight so you can see where your drone is. But that's really far, and what's more important is that it can maintain a strong signal even at a closer range without breaking up or worrying about losing connection. Your heart always skips a beat if there's ever a moment that you lose your phone signal, but when it stays connected the whole time, you can feel a lot more relaxed while your drone is in the air. But it's very important that you know that if you get into this one, you are missing out on all the obstacle avoidance. The Mavic has sensors on the side, so it knows when there's objects near it on the sides and on the back and on the front and in all directions, it won't run into things. So I love that this smaller thing still has the longer battery life we're starting to get used to in drones. Now, these tiny little batteries will fly for up to 31 minutes. Plus the batteries are just so small that you can fit like three or four of them in your backpack. There's also a multi-charger that can charge up to three of these at a time. I'd recommend you at least buy two when you do. There is a fly more kit, which will come with everything you might need for it. So I gotta go pick up those extra batteries. But if you head over to bestbuy.ca, 
they will have all of the accessories you need. And this video is brought to you by Best Buy. It's a great place to go pick up any drone accessories that you need, new batteries, memory cards. Make sure you get a fast micro SD card. I've made the mistake of using slower cards in my drone sometimes, and then your 4K footage can start to lag and buffer it. It's just not worth it. Get the fastest possible card you can uh, and at least 64 gigabytes. I'll put links to all the recommended accessories in the description below. And yeah, remember, Best Buy does have a lot of different drones, so you can compare them side by side, know exactly which one is right for you. And I know it's kind of last minute, but if you're still looking for Christmas gift ideas, actually, I did a whole gift guide about everything cool, all the tech things I found at Best Buy, so you can check that video as well. Anyway, thanks again, Best Buy, for sponsoring this video. It's kind of weird that now the controller is actually bigger than the drone but they've done some smart things in this redesign. I'm kind of wondering if they integrated the antennas into the camera holder here, because it used to be that you'd have little bunny ears you'd flip up on the controller as well, but it all seems much more tightly integrated, so it's just one little box. There's nothing to get caught in your bag. And speaking of, one thing I was really worried about before my first drone is if I ever broke any of the blades. They're actually really cheap to replace, uh, so I have broken them a few times when it's landing and it hits a rock or something, but it does come with some extra blades as well, so you could replace those if you need to. The one thing that kills me about this is the dynamic range because it doesn't have log. I do miss the log profile, but the only time I really notice is these kind of shots from like facing the sun, like right into the sun, you see it. But if I turn around and like just look at the clouds, oh, here we go. Okay, this is perfect. Here the dynamic range just doesn't even matter. When the light is right, this image looks as good as any of the other drones I've flown. But Log isn't a magic bullet that solves everything. I actually don't see a massive difference in image quality between the DJI Mini 2 and the Mavics. The bigger difference comes with the Inspire series where the sensor in lens is bigger. That's when the image really looks amazing. This is definitely good enough for most people though. I find sometimes DJI over sharpens the default settings. So it's nice to take a bit of that edge off in post, like a little bit of blur or a little bit of grain. If you're gonna be using your drone more for photography, this does shoot JPEG and RAW. I love shooting in RAW in it, like I much prefer it because when you're up in the sky, if you make a mistake in JPEG, it's a lot harder to fix it in post. They're 12 megapixels, they look really good. One trick I'd strongly recommend is that if you want to shoot vertical, you shoot a panorama where first you shoot one looking straight ahead and then using your controller, you angle the lens down and shoot another one and then you stitch those together on the computer afterwards. A feature I really want DJI to bring back is in one of the old Mavics, you used to be able to rotate the lens to a vertical orientation. I would use that all the time. I mean, especially for Instagram photos, typically vertical, reels, stories. There's a lot of times I shoot vertical. Please just give me a way to do that more easily. Those are the most important things. A few other features that are still there are quick shots, which have been on many of the other DJI drones. So you can really easily get some of those cool effects that you see other people shooting where either the drone wraps around or a droney, where it starts by looking at you and then takes off really fast. There are so many different ways to get good shots with the drone. I have a lot of tips on the podcast, actually. I had Johnny Harris and my friend Safe Solvin. Those two guys are amazing what they shoot with their drones. And we went through all of the tips that might be helpful to you. So there is a link in the description below, stallmanpodcast.com, so you can learn a lot more about how to fly your drone effectively. This also can now take off from up to 4,000 meters. Meter? Meters. Wow, that, that's really high. I am never 4,000 meters high, but I do have friends that go hiking with their drones and they do have problems sometimes as you get to higher altitudes, the air gets thinner, it's windier, but this is also now more wind resistant. If you're gonna choose one of these smaller drones, the biggest disadvantage is in the wind. It's kind of windy right now. So I'm not gonna let this thing go higher than like 15 feet because I don't want to lose it. So do be careful. If you don't get a full size bigger drone, you gotta be very aware of your wind conditions. DJI says the Mini 2 can resist winds up to 37.8 kilometers per hour, which is a lot. But I would keep in mind, that's one of the bigger trade-offs between the large drones and the small ones. The bigger it is, the easier it is to fly in more adverse conditions. So I'd be a little more careful with the smaller drones. On our second day of filming, it was quite a bit windier, so we stayed at a really low altitude because I just didn't want to lose this thing. But still, overall, the gimbal does a great job of controlling the horizon and keeping the image steady and straight. I mean, you take a look at the footage for yourself. What do you think? Does this footage look windy? Tell me in the comments below. And also, I'd love it if you guys hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, now's a better time than any to keep coming back every time I post a new video. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. So I've got to give some credit to all the YouTubers that ride one wheels out there. You guys make it look so easy. I thought I was just going to get on and be a pro. 
but it takes some practice and I should probably wear a helmet. <laughs> but it's awesome. I have to get good at this. I am very determined to be, you know, a Jesse Driftwood level one wheeler. It's gonna happen.